Maybe just in closing for this session, um, you know, I, reports, I hear a lot of people complain about their, you know, their molecular reports that come back that they don't understand how to incorporate that and interpret it. A favorite study we ran uh, at Georgetown was an eye tracking experiment because academic oncologists kept saying, don't tell me what drugs are related. They wanted to see the genes or the fusions or, you know, and they'll do the reporting. Whereas community oncologists traditionally have said, I don't want to know the genes, just tell me what drug to give. And so when we did eye tracking experiments, we showed oncologists, whether academic or, not, or community, uh, the report, guess where everyone's eyes went uh, as soon as they showed it was right to the drugs. Um, and, and only then people would go back and sort of reconfirm with, with that. And I think that put our, um, our, our partner companies that do molecular profiling on the hot seat for some of the recommendations they were making with therapies. And it was interesting to watch that tighten up over time. So, um, uh, 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 Tony, give me a sense of what your favorite kind of report is. So you, uh, you want the genes or you want to know the drugs or you want both? Uh, I primarily want the genes. I frankly uh, find the, the drug listing a bit, uh, um, a bit random sometimes. Yeah. Uh, in all frankness, you know, for most of the, the drugs, so we're looking for the drug genes that are relevant to the disease. And if they're relevant and we know how to target them, I, I don't care what's in the listing. On the other hand, a lot of the other background noise, uh, you know, end up sometimes actually uh, 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 detrimental in some ways because I've seen patients, you know, where a random, uh, you know, mutation that there was a case report that links it to Everolimus and then the physician wrote Everolimus. Uh, before even sending the patient to consider a clinical trial that may or may not be relevant for that. So I, I, you know, I find actually that uh, uh, very uh, uh, problematic. I, I, I think linking it to clinical trials is actually very useful. Yeah. That actually does help. Uh, and it does help, uh, you know, especially when we have driver mutations uh, or driver alterations that are targetable. Uh, so personally, I mean, I, I really just care about uh, the uh, and, and I look, by the way, I look at the variant of unknown significance as well. To yeah. some of them, you know, with time they graduate to known significance, uh, and, and they do essentially uh, some of some of the ATM uh, alterations of unknown significance have, uh, you know, in my clinic actually been associated with some dramatic responses to uh, uh, to ophelia or fault forms. Yeah, sometimes that little tiny pulmonary nodule is actually a met. Uh, Mark, any thoughts? Yeah, no, I, the, the reports, I, I struggle a lot with some of the um, reports that, that we see. And, and um, you know, to your point about, uh, I, I agree with Tony, I, I'd rather see which genes are altered and how they're altered, because I know what to do once you tell me what's going on with the, uh, the, the DNA or the RNA. Um, uh, you know, we had a recent case at our center where a patient was sent for a second opinion on a garden um, assay, he had a ROS1 mutation um, and not a fusion, but he got started on entrectinib. So, you know, that, that because, the, because the report said ROS1 entrectinib, you know, not making the distinction between a point mutation and a fusion. And the um, guy from Blue Cross missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> or whatever, wherever he was from. But, but you know, so, sometimes I agree with Tony, sometimes the reports are very damaging. Um, uh, so, um, you know, I think we have to be aware of that and educate um, our community docs about these sorts of things. I, you know, I, I get several calls a month uh, about how do you interpret this report, that report, what should I do sort of thing. So I, it's good that they should be calling us to get the information. That's absolutely true. And we have to remember, though, that we, we are very focused. And if we had to know everything for every disease, it's oh, yeah. to know, right? So... I mean, the nice thing about uh, our center too is we do have a twice a month molecular tumor board. I'm sure others have it too. And, um, you know, we, we, we discuss a lot of these things uh, in the tumor board. So that's very helpful also. Yeah, I think the main point I want to leave us with is, is you know, we got to, it's okay not to know. We're all learning. And yeah. if, you, if you're looking at something you're not sure of, check on it. There are ways to do that.
Any yeah. other comments? Yeah, just one, one last comment. You know, I think really looking at the drugs, it's really a lot of the times there are two things out there. So let's say a KRS due to a D mutation for pancreatic, for the longest time, one of the NGS companies, uh, which is used all over, has listed, you know, a mech inhibitor for it, right? <laughs> and so you've seen it, I've seen it, Tony's seen it. It's, and that's, you know, we know, we know what, the, what the response is. So that, you know, so it, it's, a, I think from our side, it's, a, it's an educational perspective, exactly as Mark said. And then the second thing is the co-mutations when it comes up, not with NTREX so much, but let's say if you have a hurt new and a KRAS or something, something which is a co-mutation in which really if you give a, a you know, uh, more of an antibody targeted, uh, not a small molecule antibody target, it's not going to work in that. So I think they also list out, these are the five mutations, these are the five drugs you can give them. And mm -hmm. sometimes that leads yeah. to a lot of confusion saying, what if I combine A, B, and C, and D? And yeah. make it, right? I mean, that's, we've seen that too. So it gets, I think it gets into really, uh, you know, so there's a lot of education which is needed on that. Uh, I really think the focus should be on the genes, and especially what Tony's saying, the BUSs are important because it doesn't mean that therapies don't exist. It just means that they really haven't looked at the, you know, it's just not been that well described in the database. So there are a lot of lot of little points in the in the report, and the reports are like 30 pages, right? And sometimes that can lead to you know things getting getting lost. That's the other thing with some of these NGS reports. They just go pages and pages, and you know how many people look. I, I don't know if you've done a study, you know, how many look, you know, more than the first page, the first two pages, because some of the other things, nuances may be hidden, hidden deep inside. That's the other issue. I want to say that there is no perfect report because for us that we only uh, practice one tumor, uh, it's very easy to, to know. And actually I'm, I'm very excited with the genes because uh, we have been discovering genes, you know, uh, new genes, things like that. But for, I was mentioning I passed my boards and then, and then when you have uh, in CML, I, I just discovered that it's four or five lines now of PKIs with a bunch of names and resistant mutations. I guess it's very hard for, for a community oncologist or general oncologist to, to know all of this. That's why I think maybe if you put the drugs, as I, 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 there is more one platform that they mentioned the drug, but they also, when you click there, you go to a link that they quote the original study. You can not only educate yourself, but you, there is also corroboration and this is not a fluke. So it's something very important or more serious so you can uh, evaluate and, and, and take more important uh, suggestion in that case, you know? Yeah, but, you know, so that's, that's, that's where the complexity is of just a simple gene predicting for a response ends up being the, the, the gist of the report. So for example, as Shubham, you know, just mentioned, in colorectal cancer, if you have, and I'm assuming in all cancers, if you have a RAS mutation and a HER2 amplification, so two things happen. One, you're not going to respond to the EGFR inhibitor. Two, you're not going to respond to as well to the HER2 uh, targeted strategy. Yet, uh, you know, you're going to see a HER2 targeted strategy uh, that's essentially uh, uh, in the checkbox. So that's unfortunate because that, at the end of the day, is uh, uh, contraindicated, meaning it's not going to work for the patients, and you have to go through a million hoops to put, to get the patient on this on the study. Uh, you know, I mentioned also the rare alterations that have a case report here and there. I, I'm not disagreeing with the fact that it's okay to have some recommendations that are there. The problem is many of those are very random. Uh, they're probably generated by just you know, a, a, a computer listing of, if you have this, you go to this drug, without essentially looking at the global picture, which gets much more complicated now that we find a lot of these co-occurrences, some driver mutations, some mutations that actually drive resistance when you, when you have the fusion or the amplification present. So I, I think the story is so complex now, it's much more complex that, uh, you know, I really want to have access to the gene uh, and if I want to have access to understanding what all these co-alterations are doing together, uh, I want a much more comprehensive type of, uh, of report that tells me essentially, no, wait, wait a second, you shouldn't use this. Although, you know, the amplification is there, but watch out for the mutation that's telling you that this will not work. You know, so we're, all not very, we're all very used to, you know, if we get a funny radiology report, CT scan report, we'll either call up or go down to talk to the radiologist and say, what, what do you mean with this? And I think we should treat these kinds of reports the same way and go to the source, apply clinical, good clinical judgment uh, to uh, the decision-making on the therapeutics. John, I had one last point. I know we've gone, but you know, the 
Also, these reports don't make a distinction between tumor types. So as we know, it's with G12C, lung, you know, if you target G12C with lung right now, it's very different than colorectal. Uh, you know, so, so we know kind of these differences. So it's really more of a push towards those companies which make these NGS reports to get better on their uh, alg algorithms, which used to report this out because it's very tumor specific also. Uh, so it's more of a challenge towards them. You know, obviously, you know, it's, it's very hard in the community to kind of make sense of all this. So I think if they get their act together, it might, you know, it might help out a little bit more with the community oncologist also getting the right therapeutics to the right patient. You know, that's what it's about. Okay. Uh, we'll let that be the last word for, for that discussion.